What's up, y'all? Welcome. You see, so you know what it is. Um, last time we did Romans 12. This time we're doing Corinthians 12. And it's more of the same, how everybody who's in Christ has a purpose and has a role. All right, the first one was more uh, functions. This one, the first one in Romans 12 was more about functions. This one in Corinthians 12 is more about spiritual gifts, which they all come with the Holy Spirit. So whoever has the Holy Spirit has all these gifts that I'm going to talk about. When you use them, it's not up to you. Just remember that we are supposed to be vessels. We are supposed to be vessels that the Lord operates through. So that means that we are liable to use any one of these gifts of the Holy Spirit at any time because it's the Holy Spirit within us that uses the gift, not us ourselves. All right? So, Corinthians 12. And for those of y'all who don't want to hear that Bible talk, this is where you make the exit. For the rest of you, you are the invited. Welcome. So we know from the last time, well, I remember from the last time that Corinthians is after Romans. Romans is after Acts, Acts is after the Gospels. So it goes to Gospels, Acts, Romans, Corinthians. Oh yeah, there's two books of Corinthians. We have 1 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians is between Romans and 2 Corinthians. The first and second books, there's only two books of Corinthians, which are the letters written to the people that lived at Corinth at the time. And then Romans is the letters written to the people that lived at Rome at the time. And then after Corinthians is Galatians. And we're going to do Galatians too. So I decided to turn this into a little bit of a series. Because this is where this 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 is this, this series that I'm going to do it lets you know part of your purpose in Christ. You got to figure it out uh, between individual prayer, between you, the Lord, and communion with the Holy Ghost, what it is you're supposed to be doing. But this is that power I'll be talking about, all right? First Corinthians chapter 12 is in between Romans and 2 Corinthians. Behind Romans in front of 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant, you know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but, the, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. For all these worketh one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For the body is one, and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are, are one body. So also is Christ. For by the Spirit we are all baptized into one body, wherewith we be Jews or Gentiles, wherewith we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink in one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it had pleased Him, and if they were all one member, where were the body? And now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, 
I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor in our uncomely, part, our, in our uncomely parts that have more abundant comeliness. For we are, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. First Corinthians 12. Got to get back on my tea game, man. Got to get my medicine in, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey, man. This ain't raspberry tea. This is, you can tell how dirty that bottle is. I make my black tea. I got my bags of black tea. I, I use uh, three bags of black tea, and I pour it into a cup with some hot water, and then I pour some cold water into that, and I just let it chill for whoever knows how long. And then I pour it in here, and I pour some more water in it. So this, this tea right here is just regular organic black tea. No honey, no sugar, no nothing. I'm just using the bottle. And it's uh, it's warm, but it's more on the cool side than the hot side. All right? And this is medicine. Now, 1 Corinthians 12. Now, concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. And that's not the first time that Paul has written that or has been written in the New Testament. Because we know, we know what the word ignorant means, right? The word ignorant means uneducated or uninformed. It means you basically don't know. And I found personally within my life that some people try to use that I didn't know excuse so they could behave however type of ways. Because the truth is, is that if something happens and a person does what isn't good or does something sloppy or something disrespectful, and you try to check the person on it, and they be like, well, I didn't know, you can't really do much. Like, the person didn't know. This is why it's important for people to seek out knowledge or for people to speak to other people or let people know. So he's telling us, like, shoot, uh, I, I won't have you ignorant. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to let you know what I know. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as they were led. Dumb idols as in not speaking, not dumb as in dumb. The thing about the English language, that the English language is very young. The English language is mostly a compilation of Greek and Latin words when it comes to root words and the prefixes and suffixes of the English language are like old English or it's Dutch or it's, you know what I'm saying, one of those old Eastern or what's that, Western European countries. But the English language itself is very young. And over time, words, words have different meaning over time. Etymology or etymology is a study of, of the origin of words, tracing it back to the oldest language possible which is most likely Greek, Latin, or what's the other one, Sanskrit, and then uh, Hebrew, and other African languages as well. But we don't speak a lot of African languages here in America. All right, so when they say dumb, they don't mean dumb as we say, as we know it as today. Dumb as in not able to speak. That's what dumb means here. Remember, this is Old English, King James Version. This is Old English, all right? And then that's what that's what they did a lot in the old days. They had they had all sorts of worship. I mean, they had all sorts of idols and all sorts of gods that they worship. You could take a look around my house and you could see that I may have brands of stuff, but I don't have any weird African masks. I don't have any gnomes, no owls, no statues. Like you go to people's houses, and they have all these weird things up in their house. And then uh, some of them. Some people be having weird dreams. They be bringing devils and demons and false gods into their house. And they be wondering, like, hey, I be having these weird dreams. You got to get that occult stuff up out of here. Like dumb idols. Like having statues of gods and old ancient gods. Like if you're into that, if you're a pagan and you do that, that's on you. But some people, they be acting like they're Christians or they serve the Lord. They be having all these weird things up in their house. All these strange pictures. People be inviting spirits into their house. I don't play that monkey business. No dumb idols here. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That's a separation between the spirits of God and then the Antichrist spirits, is those who admit that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, and it says, and it says, a kingdom divided will not stand. And it was talking about the kingdom of Satan. You know, so people think that Satan is some big dummy. Satan is not a dummy. You know, 
Because if you had if you had a kingdom divided and you had to defend yourself against opposition, you won't be able to stand. And that's another that's that's what it's basically saying here is that those who are of the Lord are of the Lord and they will know that Jesus is the Son of God. And nobody who's of the Lord will say that Jesus is a curse or is a curse. Okay? Now, the diversity, oh yeah, and it says, it only says that by the Holy Ghost. Now, the diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it's the same God that worketh all in all. Everybody has different functions, different purposes, and different services, but they're all inside the same organization, the same body, which is Christ. All right. But the manifest but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Okay, so for for to no one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. This is where he lists off the different kind of functions, so pay attention. And it says it before, it had started with the precept. It said, For the one it said, uh, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now it's about to go through the list of the manifestations of the spirits, of the spirit. The manifestations of the spirit is one spirit, okay? This is this is Christianity. This is this is Bible. This is Bible talk, okay? This is the Holy Bible, all right? There's one spirit. Now we don't have a bunch of spirits over here. There's one spirit with all of these gifts and all of this power. Here we go. To another faith, by the no. Here we go. For one is given the word of wisdom. The difference between wisdom and knowledge, knowledge is basically knowing something. Wisdom, you have to know, but wisdom is more like the timing, you know, so. And then wisdom also comes with years because you can know things without experiencing things. But when you have wisdom, you go through things that gives you a different kind of perspective. All right. So it says wisdom. So there, here we go. Yeah, the spirit, the word of wisdom is a function. It's a gift. And then another, the word of knowledge, which I just basically explained, by the same spirit, by the same spirit, here we go, into another faith by the same spirit. Now, the gift of faith is, is people who really believe. It says, it says uh, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, and it says it's the tiniest seed that you can think of, you can have a mountain moved. It's saying that the smallest bit of faith can do the greatest works there are, if you believe. And those who, those who operate within the gift of faith, they have the same faith as if God can do anything. They really believe it. They're not saying it because that's what you're supposed to say. People who have the gift of faith, they don't just talk talk. They really believe it. They have you believe in stuff that you didn't believe. <laughs> For real. People, people who have faith, the gift of faith, they speak, they talk, and they live as if there's nothing that can't be done by God. And they really mean it. They're not just saying it. They're not talking. They really live by this faith. All right. And to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit, the healing of diseases such as cancer. This stuff happens. Cancer gets healed. All sorts of crazy diseases. Uh, leprosy. You already know about leprosy. That's one of the biggest ones in the Bible. You know, lepers being healed. Um, people being people being healed of mental disorders, allergies. Yeah. So that's another gift of the Holy Spirit. So we're four in. We got wisdom. We got knowledge. We got faith and we got healing so far. The four gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's that's what we got so far. Here we go. And to another, the working of miracles. Now, the working of miracles is more like, I was, I'm reading Kings. I'm in the middle of Kings. My personal Bible study, I'm in the middle of Kings. It is constant miracles. I just read Kings last night. And then this woman couldn't have a kid. And it was Elisha, not Elisha. Elisha was the uh, successor of Elijah. But even the miracle of Elijah, after he had went to war with Ahab and them, Elijah outran Ahab's chariot and beat them back to the kingdom. The miracles. Um, all sorts of miracles in the Bible. But anywho, Elijah had, he had a, a lady had asked him to ask God pretty much to give her a child. So God had gave her a child, but the child ended up dying. And she went and got Elijah. And Elijah came over here and stretched himself over the body. It pretty much laid some of his spirit into the kid and, and prayed that the Lord would raise the kid back up and then he was raised from the dead. This is in 2 Kings 4, I think. You know? So that's the miracles. Stuff like that. Because how can a man outrun a chariot of horses? How could somebody just lay on top of somebody else and give them life and bring them back to life? And he was dead for days, too. 
And then all the miracles of Jesus, we know about his, right? Turning wine into water. I mean, turning water into wine. Uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. Casting out devils. All those are miracles. All right? So that's five. And to another prophecy, to be able to speak on behalf of the Lord. To deliver the message of the Lord to a person or to a group or to a nation of people. Which is what prophecy is. And possibly to interpret dreams and visions. To another discerning the spirits. To discerning the spirits. To discern something is to see things for what it is. To see the nature of something. To discern something is to see the nature of something. So those who can discern spirits. It's not that you can really see the spirits themselves. Some people can see the spirits. But it's really to know the difference between the spirit of God. If it's the Holy Spirit. Or unholy spirits. Evil spirits. Demons. Devils. Fallen angels. Uh... The spirit of man, because we have all sorts of things within our spirit. So those are the three spirits that you primarily want to discern. And if you want to add the fourth, the fourth would be animals. But the animals are kind of like us. That's why it showed the example of Jesus casting those devils into those swine. Because animals can be possessed too. All right? And depending on what you believe, so can objects. All right? That's why people worship idols. They believe that gods are inside these objects, these idols. Okay? And, but the discerning of spirits is to tell which spirit that you're dealing with when you discern spirits. It's not as actually seeing spirits. All right? Now, that was six, right? And to another diverse kinds of tongues, so being able to speak different languages. All right? And to another interpretation of tongues, so to be able to understand other languages. So in Acts, I think it was Acts 2, it said that every person from their own nation in Acts was speaking their own language, but still, people, uh, the apostles was able to understand what they were saying because the gift had given them the 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 ability, the ability to understand the language that they didn't even speak before. So that's it. Here we go. We got wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy. Discerning the spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, so be able to speak multiple languages, and then interpretation of tongues to be able to understand it. That's the nine gifts of spirits that we just did right there. All right. But all these work if that one and the self same spirit divided to every man separately as he will. That's it. We, we got more. I'm about to come back for the rest of this. I'm about to uh, shoot part two. Yeah. So that's basically the nine, nine gifts of the spirit. But here it goes. It says it again. But all these work if that one in itself same spirit, same spirit, divide into every man severally as he will. So everybody gets some, but it's only one spirit, the Holy Ghost. We don't do that multiple spirit stuff over here. All right, it's one spirit. It's one Lord. One Father, one Son, one Spirit around here, all right? Let me let me turn this off so I can shoot part two. Mm. 